So I thought just yeah. kind of almost like seamlessly moving into it. In fact, I might even leave this mm. bit in the edit yeah. just to kind of, you know, yeah. give people listening and watching a, just a, a flavour of a different sort of style. Um, yeah. and, and I guess for me, it was really just an extension of um, some of your comments on one of the um, earlier episodes, which I can um, sort of put into the uh, in, into the, the edit. In fact, I can actually find that whilst we're on the call. It was episode 20 on Friday, the 24th of April, everybody. Um, that was the episode where I was talking to Adrian Beale about um, jackfruit. And this was something that uh, piqued the interest of Mr. Paul Terrell because uh, he identified that whilst yes it might be a lovely product what he identified was the fact it's grown on the other side of the world and so of course it got us talking it got us exploring this whole idea of um well eco logistics was the phrase that we used to kind of define this and you started talking Paul about some of the whole things around um, sailing products around the world rather than flying them and having them sort of motorized uh, in, the, in the supply chain so it just got us talking about well actually we mm. should explore this in more detail so I, I guess to kind of sort of seamlessly roll into that what, what, what do you mean when you talk about eco-logistics? Well, the word came to me from a book that was one of a, a series of, um, if you like, the sort of hippie books. Um, when, um, when this massive consciousness movement happened in the 60s and, and 70s, um, and you call it a hippie movement, if you like, there was, a lot of it was um, very up in the air. And then there was a certain amount of it that was extremely grounded. And books came out like the Whole Earth Catalogue, Shelter, which are sort of icons of, of the uh, people getting together and um, making compendiums of practical information of the old ways of living close to nature, um, low tech technologies of how to build houses using um, materials from your local environment and so on and so on, how to heat houses uh, for free and all these kind of things. And one of the books was logistics, uh, eco-logistics. And this dealt with um, everything from how to convert your camp, your van to a camper van, uh, to how to pump water up from a stream, um, using the power of the stream to do the pumping. And so it had all this low tech uh, stuff in it. And um, I've uh, kidnapped the word uh, to, to mean um, whether the um, uh, uh, the the e economics, if you like, of nature, and so I think I briefly told you that um, uh, uh, when I was at university, we did a study. Um, I was uh, studying um, uh, uh, the, the the degree itself was botany and zoology, but the main thing I was studying was um, environment, and um, uh, uh, this was a, a new kind of study actually then, an, an environmental studies, and what we looked at was um, how much energy is available each year made available to human beings and to animals and plants by the sunshine. And of course, there's this massive amount of sunshine coming in um, and only a very small percentage is actually locked into biomass. And that is through plants growing and animals eating the, the plants. Um, there are many other benefits from the sunshine keeping us warm, keeping the temperature so that people can actually stay alive um, and also creating environments where, it, yes, t it, temperature is one thing, but also th things like um, uh, it gets very complex just for human beings. If we don't get in the sunshine and we don't get uh, sun on our skin, we don't get vitamin D3 and we die. I mean, we, uh, the, the main cause of cancer is lack of vitamin D3. 50% uh, of people with cancer are low on vitamin D3. This is, and yet we've had doctors telling people don't go in the sun. So it is very strange that you've got perfectly good science and knowledge, and yet the reverse is being fed to us. So that's another subject. But what, um, what the maths of this eco-logistics would be is, you've got this store of energy in biomass, uh, that you can eat or you can make houses out of or whatever you want to do, um, uh, I, I would say with permission from the plant or the, the animal, but, um, and when you've gone beyond that, you're then stealing from the planet. And then, um, so if you, um, uh, like we are now, we're using fossil fuels. So we've got this 
um, every year the sun, sun shines and, and we grow more and more biomass. But once we start using um, uh, fossil fuels, we're then uh, stealing from the future. And so the, this, this reservoir of things that we can't replace, uh, copper, uranium, uh, the, the metals we're taking out of the ground and so on is going down and down and down. And sustaining this lifestyle where we don't stick to our yearly budget uh, of sunshine units, we go beyond it. So while we go beyond it, we're stealing from the planet. And this is clearly unsustainable and it comes to a point where the lifestyle will not be supported uh, by this kind of consumption. And at the same time, people are not, are more and more disconnected from being able to survive in harmony with the, with the planet and staying within the sunshine budget. So um, I hope I've sort of uh, made clear the big picture of it. It's about seeing um, our consumption in terms of sunshine units and whether we're keeping within the yearly amount. Once we do that, then you can sustain it forever. So when it makes such logical sense, I mean, the way that you sort of very eloquently kind of put it there, it's just very succinct, it's very clear, it's very, makes logical, obvious sense. Why have we gone, why have we got it so wrong? Why have we gone so far askew and, and kind of got into this situation? Well, um, it's, uh, it's to do with the human brain. Um, uh, there are certain biases built in. Um, we like to think of ourselves as kind of, we can be logical and we can, you know, but it's just not true. Um, we've got these built in uh, biases. And one extremely strong one is peer pressure. Uh, if you can imagine, I mean, it, well, mammals, you see, have been around for millions of years and the human mammal has been around for about two million years. And during that time, and as apes before, the DNA that was being um, selected um, uh, was for small tribes where when, it, when there's no food left in the environment and, the, and the, the, the elder people say, we need to move, we need to go somewhere else. Um, and then if you, if you rather like it there, or you're sick and you're old, you say, I don't want to go. You see, well, what are you going to do? Everybody's going. There's enormous pressure for you to go. And there are stories of old people that they leave behind because they have to go. So if you're too sick and you're too old, they leave you behind and you'll die. And um, uh, so this is incredibly strong that you will do what the rest of the group do. And hence, perfectly um, uh, loving, kind uh, uh, German people uh, found themselves pushing uh, people into gas ovens because everybody else was. And they were perfectly nice people. There was nothing, they weren't nasty people. They just, it's so difficult. If everybody else is doing it, are you really going to stick your hand up and say, I don't think this is a good idea? And we've got that problem because of central uh, government. That when you have a central government right now and, and being supported by um, science saying global warming is our problem, is our, is our uh, problem that we need to solve uh, around nature, which it isn't. There are many other problems that are far more um, uh, urgent uh, than uh, this one, uh, but it becomes a religion. As it goes, it doesn't, science, is, science and logic are out the window. Uh, you just got a, 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 a stampede where the money is there and the belief is there, it's like a religion. And so this is very dangerous and us humans can do it so easily. And you'll have people now so convinced, they know no science whatsoever, but they've just been bombarded on the TV that this is what you believe in. So they believe in it, but it's just a belief. It's not the truth. And so this is the problem for human beings. We're, we're, we're designed to follow the group and for very good reasons in the past, but that's when we were small tribes and you were just doing local decisions. And now we've got a situation which is, um, uh, is the, I would say the causing of the problems is, what one nature does is no central command and massive diversity. Um, all the animals just do what they do. Lions do what lions do, zebras do what zebras do, and they, they, one tries to run fast and the other tries to catch it. And, and after all these millions of years, there's a balance. And the balance moves around a bit, but 
it's balanced. And so what we're doing now is central command and absolutely no diversity at all. Everybody has the same kind of TV, they drive cars, um, McDonald's, Coca-Cola. So no diversity um, or minimal diversity, central command, it is exactly the way not to do um, anything at all. We're part of nature, we're an animal in nature and we have divorced ourselves uh, for not for uh, as you say is something gone wrong not really it's just what happened uh, we 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 got clever at building tool making tools and then we um we made some i think the big if you want to look at where the mistakes happened uh it, it, it or the 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 road turned uh, in a in in a unfortunate uh way is farming um, when the hunters realize that um, they've got some seeds in their pocket because they're bringing them home from the field, it's taken them ages to collect all these seeds because the, the plant they're looking for is spread out. But they've spilt some near the house and suddenly it's growing near the house. So why don't we just grow it all near the house? That's, that's a good idea, isn't it? But then it turns out that if you're going to grow it all together, you have to actually dig it down, you have to sow it, and, and then you have to put manure, and then, you, and then why do you have to go and hunt these animals? Why not just bring them home and breed them? You see, so it's all, all good idea. Then you get excess, then you get towns, and then you get cities, then you get markets. And the problem with the markets is people argue. So then the, the family with the biggest uh, number of um, young men with clubs sorts out the arguments. And at that point, somehow it was the men who started making the decisions and the women were left out. Now, how that happened. We're not sure because there's no, uh, but you can imagine that when, when, when the men said, right, we're going down the market to bang some heads and sort them out. And the women say, oh, we'll just go ahead. You know, we don't care. But the trouble about that is that uh, it may have been the case that it was all innocent. Uh, you know, we're always looking for somebody who did something bad or something wrong, but I don't think that's the case. I think we just follow our noses and, and we, we just do who we are. And, so from that point where you got the bully boys sorting things out and taking power and then hence being able to have armies and tell everybody what to do and then empires, um, it all started with farming. You couldn't have done it without farming. And so you've got double problems because one is you're destroying the soil to the point where um, if, if the film is right, um, the, there's a new film called A Need to Grow and uh, their, their scientists say, we've, we've got less than 60 years left of, of uh, topsoil, pretty much on the planet. And then we're in trouble. We're already in trouble, actually, because the, the amount of topsoil that's available for agriculture is d disappearing at an enormous rate. So you've got agriculture destroying the land because once you cut the surface, you kill the, the microbes in the soil. And then you have to replace from somewhere else, which will be fossil fuel, and you're stealing. Whereas if you do permaculture, uh, yeah, it's called, but, or you do natural, uh, um, uh, natural living on the planet, uh, where you just take from nature uh, what it can replenish itself, um, then uh, of course uh, everything works out. So you've got um, the, the problems of farming and then the problems of central command and imperialism. Um, human beings are designed to be in tribes to sort out their problems in, in, a, in, in tribal groups of, of what that size might be. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it varies. Some people say you should be able to know everybody's name, which would be about 150 or 300 people. And, other, and then of course, in practical terms, uh, groups have, have managed very well in larger numbers. But these are the, um, it, uh, to uh, make a decision centrally about what's good for nature hundreds of miles away or thousands of miles away is nonsense. You can't possibly know. And this is why you've seen the nonsense with the EU reg uh, legislation and regulations for fishing, if you like, and, and for, for farming. It's, um, uh, it, uh, the, the, the Swedish farmers were asked to, they would only get the money for their, for their um, what they call eng, which is their meadows, if they cut down all the trees. Because if you don't got a tree in it, it isn't a meadow. But a Swedish meadow has trees in and it's traditionally had trees in, and the trees need to be there for the meadow to survive. But if you want the money, you have to cut your trees down. Do you see what I mean? So this, um, 
uh, we've got two main problems. One is farming um, and the other is uh, central government rather than um, uh, decent. So decentralization and allowing people to do what they love doing um, and of course education, uh, you know, farmers have very fixed ideas about what makes money, uh, but it might not be good for the environment. So um, as always, we come back to education and um, uh, the difficulty uh, with that, and I'm, I'm gonna go into the difficulties with, with that in, in a series I'm going to do about uh, psychology, is you need to unlearn, you need to empty your cup before you can learn new things. And we've been learning, 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 um, um, and in a way, and it's a lot of these causes is just brainwashing. It's not true, it's just, this is the way that we do it. And we've got, to, I think, to the point now where it's obvious to most people that it's not working and it's, uh, uh, we're heading towards a, really a lot of parallel disasters um, on ecologically, economically, socially, and so on. Um, and so how do you change that round? And, and um, it, uh, it seems to me it always comes back to the same thing, which is the individual questioning their own set of beliefs and um, being prepared to accept new ideas. And if, if individuals don't do that, then nothing changes. You just get the, the man with the biggest stick telling people what to do, which is what we've had. And that's old paradigm. The new paradigm is everybody makes up their own idea of uh, how they want to live. Um, and, uh, you know, when people are given the freedom to create their lives as they want, they behave very well. People don't behave very well if they're hit with a stick and, and, and abused and um, forced into corners and things like that. Um, so th those are the two things. The, the agriculture is, is uh, uh, an enormous challenge. How are we going to change that round? Uh, and the other is uh, whether these uh, people who like central power um, will let go of it and allow people to build their own communities and sort, because all the, 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 the solutions to are, are, are local. They're never going to be um, uh, global solutions. We, we've seen this with, um, uh, you know, the global solution to alternative uh, energies. And so we've got these uh, uh, wind uh, turbine factories, farms, um, and it costs more um, uh, fossil fuel to run them than you will ever get out of them. It's a disaster. And um, uh, the, the scientists knew this before it started. The, the work was done that the, the, the best the, the, the sustainable size for generating electricity from the wind is between 10 and 40 um, kilowatts. That's tiny. You need to do it on tiny scale because as it gets bigger, you need fossil fuels to mend the thing, to take it down, to get a crane in and things like this. So um, we've had this knowledge, but it hasn't been politically correct. And uh, this is the problem. You, the, the, the scientists are paid by the politicians and uh, the politicians have their own agendas, which are uh, not necessarily uh, based on, on good knowledge. So it, 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 I, I, I think it's back to um, individuals getting um, re-educated um, and being very careful of uh, the peer pressure, what you're being expected to believe. Um, this is, it, it's, it, you know, it's fine. It gives you, um, it ties you into the system that everybody's doing. So you're supported in that way. But since we're heading for the abyss, it really is time for individuals to put the brakes on. Because uh, um, it's a stampede. Um, uh, who's going to, who, the leader is not going to stop it. Um, there's so much investment. So um, I, my belief is it's uh, individuals who, who will make the turnaround. Um, and you've had a few on your show. Uh, um, Boston, Tea, Boston Tea Party, it's called, um, uh, where an individual goes completely against the grain 
and uh, makes a decision which will result in loss of income. Um, and, and he knows it will result in loss of income, but he's going to do it anyway. Uh, now that kind of, if that caught on, where um, you rely on that 25% of loss of income being replaced by new custom, more custom, because people will support these kind of ideas. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, the, the, there's never one solution. And in a way, it's, uh, we've been thinking, of it, 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 you know, we, we get manipulated by being told there's a problem and it may not be the real problem. And we're always told there's one problem. There's never one problem. And the so global warming, um, there was always bad science for it at the beginning. And once you've got politics involved, you're then gonna get lots of bad science because it's being paid for. Uh, whereas none of the other challenges, uh, like um, uh, destruction of uh, environments, which is uh, accounting for the most of the um, extinctions that we're looking at, we're looking at an enormous rate of extinction. We're in what's called the sixth age of mass extinction of life on the planet. And if it carries on at this rate, there, there's not much life left in a hundred years. I mean, it's, it's, it's logarithmic, but you've got quite a few logarithmic things happening at the moment. So um, it's, it's, it is complex to a certain extent, um, but the solutions are local and so that means that to, to actually for people to reorganize themselves on a local footing is, I think, very easy. We're, that's what we're good at. We're tribal people. We're, we're, we're good with our social skills. We're good at organizing on a small scale. All companies are very good at it. Um, uh, corporate, uh, the, uh, I mean, as you know, the problem with corpor corporations is um, they have no ethics. Um, uh, they can't have it. Uh, because they've got uh, they've got uh, shareholders cracking the whip, saying we just want money. So uh, th this was terribly unfortunate, um, uh, having um, a position where the, the business people talked governments into allowing licenses for irresponsible business, which basically a limited company is limited liability is in other words irresponsibility. So you've got a lot of other things coming in where um, uh, the uh, um, commercial interests are, are not in, in, in the interest of the individual. Uh, but these things, I think, are, you know, um, it, 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 it is complex, but I think on an, and that's why I think it's very important for individuals to have good information. And that's why my, my um, uh, new series will be um, how humans actually work so that people can check in on their biases. Am I, am, I, am I going blind here? Or when am I actually awake and when am I asleep? And um, you can check this because once you know your human biases, you can see whether you're actually using your brain to see what's there or whether you're just uh, um, projecting out in front of you your beliefs and your prejudices and your preferences. Um, and we're very, uh, that's the, the lazy way and that's what we do by default. Um, so, yeah, back to, it's, it's individual um, awakening um, that I think is, is, is the answer here rather than trying to, um, because the old paradigm is, is saying, um, this is what we all should all do to fix it. Well, you, you can't do that anymore because group decisions um, have shown to be no good. I mean, on the larger scale central command doesn't work. So, um, so thinking that, and again, we've got this thinking, more technology will sort out the problems of technology, which is impossible. Uh, the, the problem is technology. You do any more of it, you've just got more of the problem. So there's, there's no way that um, that will work. Um, production is the problem. Um, so it's a new way of thinking. And permaculture is a new way of thinking about agriculture. Um, uh, and uh, because they don't cut the soil, and this is fundamental. Um, and uh, there are uh, ideas around. Um, the native uh, indigenous people have the, the, the knowledge of uh, community and communication and democracy, true democracy. Um, so I will share, actually, this has inspired me. I will get out uh, a short, uh, maybe it'll just be one, one uh, video 
uh, called Priest Seer Sage Circle. And uh, this is some signposts for the new paradigm. The first one would be getting your power back as an individual by um, getting established in your spiritual truth. Um, that if you, without that, uh, that sort of missing link to um, consciousness, uh, you're just a, a robot. You're just running programs that you learned. And so uh, you're not really showing up as a, as a thinking person, as it were. And the second one, seer, stewardship, evoking ecological renewal. The fact that we own things is nonsense. Um, do the lions own their territory? No, they don't. They just hang out there and then they move on to another one. And they do local agreements. They have to maybe sort out the local agreements with a fight. Uh, but they're not using nuclear weapons. They're using their claws, like the, um, uh, uh, the Celts would sort out arguments between just the, the chiefs with the sword. Nobody else gets hurt. You know, um, so um, uh, th that, um, yeah, there are, uh, uh, um, uh, that's uh, stewardship. So owning things is a problem because um, uh, if you like, the peoples who are still natural people on the planet are the, the gypsy people, the Romans, the Romanies because they're living in the true way of things, which is nobody owns everything, anything. It's all for everybody, we share it. So if I'm walking down the road and there's some apples on the tree and I'm hungry, I take an apple. I don't chop the tree down. I don't take all the apples and sell them to anybody else. I take one apple for myself. Now that's natural living. So if you extend that, you walk into a shop, there's food, you're hungry, you take it because it belongs to everybody. You see, it's not stealing, it belongs to everybody. The people who stole, and this is the only place I agree with Marx, um, is that property is theft. Um, people with big clubs and uh, 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 powerful friends have just stolen things from the rest of us. And um, uh, so uh, that is a big change for us to see if we don't look after the planet for the next generations, and as the native, uh, I think, Chief Seattle said, we, we, haven't, um, we haven't inherited the earth from our predecessors. Um, we're, 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 we're loaning it from our, our, our children in the, in the future. So we should be leaving the planet in a better state of repair um, than we found it. And that means we need to look after it. Therefore, stewardship rather than ownership would be the way forward. The third one is SAGE, scientists acting for the good of everyone. At the moment, they're working for the industrial military complex and academia and uh, uh, it's a disaster. Uh, the amount of money that goes into um, war machines uh, that they that will you know some of which will never be used but it's an abomination in itself. Um, uh, uh, instead of the money going into helping old people and education and all the other things that are far more worthwhile. Um, and then, um, and these uh, scientists, you can hear in interviews where scientists say, well, you know, yes, I'm doing some rather dangerous uh, bioengineering work, but you know, I'm not the one who decides that. I'm just giving the money and told. Well, that's a three-year-old talking, not even a five-year-old. Uh, this is not grown up. And uh, so I would say um, the, the main problem here is, is uh, uh, growing up, because grown-ups don't, um, uh, don't cause pollution. Uh, children do that. Somebody else will clear it up. It's not, oh, the government have made a rule and I'm sort of keeping it. I'm not responsible. But grown-ups are responsible for everything in front of them. Uh, and then the last one, so, so when the scientists uh, actually uh, decide to uh, adopt um, a, a code of ethics and morals, uh, this will be an enormous step forward for the planet. And just say, sorry, I'm not making arms. I'm not making torture instruments. Um, I'm not going to make these chemicals because we don't know what they do yet. Uh, if we knew that they were safe, then I'd, I, I would make them, but we don't. Uh, 5G, they didn't have done any testing. Um, so how do we know whether it's safe or not? Um, it, it, you know, this is super irresponsible to build a, a worldwide um, radiation scheme, uh, which goes through so powerful, it'll go through walls in a building uh, so that it's better Wi-Fi for everybody. And there's no testing done. This is obscene. Uh, how can it happen? How can governments allow it? And how can scientists go along with it? 
So the reason is, of course, the, 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 they're really lovely, nice people who don't want to hurt a fly, but they're being paid huge amounts of money and everybody's doing it. And it's a race to be the most brilliant scientist. So the, part of the danger is being blinded by your own brilliance. And uh, so academia is blind. Uh, it cannot see the wood for the trees. They just see their own brilliance because that's what they're working on is being brilliant. So these are, st this is, this is, uh, these are some of the challenges that we have is um, academia has the ear of the politicians. Um, and you, you interviewed a professor who says, my curriculum is 40 years out of date. And it's still there though, you see? So, uh, so who, where are the grown ups uh, is really one of the questions. And the last one in this uh, um, four part um, a signpost is CIRCLE, which stands for their acronyms, as you can see, SEER, uh, Stewardship, Evoking Ecological Renewal, they're all acronyms. And the last one is CIRCLE, communities impeccably relating through CIRCLES or, or um, um, CIRCLES or, or, well, CIRCLES of leaders and elders. Now then we come to the question of who are our leaders and our elders? And traditionally, the leaders and the elders are the people who have, for no pay, and at their own trouble and expense and energy, uh, looked after their community, the sick people, the old people, um, when there's trouble. And they do it because it's who they are, not because they're paid or it's a job or anybody voted them there. So if we had uh, a system uh, where we had, we trained the children to, um, uh, to sit in circles and listen to each other and to follow the energy and see um, where the energy goes, and use consensus uh, decision making, but really not using decision making as much as possible at all, but just to follow the natural energy of what is going on. Uh, and you do that by listening and you learn the, um, the, the, uh, the protocols for true democracy, which are available and, and America nearly got from the Native Americans, but then they changed it to something a little different, but um, so these are the, um, what I would say the, the signposts of this uh, paradigm that we're moving into is uh, individual uh, starting to question their own belief systems and to start throwing out some old stuff that they just took on without thinking and to have a fresh look at what's going completely fresh look. The, secondly, to um, look after things rather than think of owning them, but looking after them for the future and making sure that whatever you do, you don't damage nature. Um, and then thirdly, the uh, scientists uh, uh, managing to get a, a, an ethical code and to stop uh, making weapons uh, for people who want to, uh, the weapons are only for killing people. They're, they're absolutely unjustifiable on any terms whatsoever. I mean, people will, they'll happily uh, 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 give you a, a, an argument that war is a good thing. It's ex extraordinary. How could it possibly be a good thing? It's never been a good thing uh, for, for anybody, mm -hmm. not the soldiers and not for the civilians who, who get killed. Um, and, uh, and on and on. So we, it's, it's time to have a, have a relook and to look after uh, the environment. Um, and then the scientists to, to, to get themselves uh, some ethics. Um, and start saying no, um, and then for us to learn true democracy. And those, uh, those came to me in a dream, actually. Well, they didn't come in a dream. I, I woke up three o'clock in the morning. I'd written those words in my diary in my sleep. And uh, when, I, when I asked, um, uh, you know, where they'd come from, I said, well, what do they mean? They said they're acronyms and this is what they stand for. And then I said, well, what's it all about? And they said, well, we're moving into a new, a new age. And this isn't something that anybody's forcing anybody to do, but look at, look what's happening. Did, did you think that, well, you weren't around at the birth of Hatha Yoga in, in Britain, but uh, it was so unglamorous. Uh, you, you sat wrapped up in 15 layers in a cold, unheated um, uh, church hall with a wooden floor and some sort of blanket to sit on uh, if you had one. Uh, that was the beginning of Hatha Yoga. In Britain, it wasn't glamorous, and nobody would have thought that it would be a multi-billion-dollar business, which it now is. 
So, um, you know, the signs are on the wall. People are, uh, the young people now growing up in a completely different environment than I grew up in. Um, and uh, the change is automatically coming. It's, it's as you, you've seen with your, um, your program and your interviews, you can see that people from all walks of life are finding themselves uh, gravitating towards a new way of doing things. What is, what is it? We're going to call it a new paradigm or new golden age or whatever. But um, I like the idea of a golden age because instead of a new, oh, what is the new paradigm? Well, we're all going to have bigger armies, you know. <laughs> if you could, but if it's, um, oh, what's the new paradigm? What's a golden age? Well, it's not, golden age doesn't sound like let's have more armies and let's have more chemicals and let's, have, you know. So I, I kind of like the, um, the, the language uh, goes into the language of the heart rather than the language of intellect. Uh, because, you know, anybody who's clever with their mind can make up slogans and use them to bash people over the head with or to, to make um, uh, uh, unsustainable kind of arguments because they're clever. But the heart is, doesn't do cleverness. It just does transparency. Um, so um, that's my take on um, ecologistics, that we need to work out how many sunshine units are there am I consuming? and work out uh, how much uh, has been fixed on the planet for this year, and am I using more or less uh, than my amount? And um, the only people who are using less are living in caravans or in tents. Anybody who lives in a house hasn't a hope of keeping within that limit, unless there's five families living there. So that's the kind of kind of logistics you're looking at is that we've gone so way 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 off that you know people might there might be people thinking oh we just need to make a little adjustment let's have an eco car well the the carbon footprint of making an eco car is so massive that it's not better than taking an old car and uh, keeping it running uh, even though it's uh, polluting and it, it doesn't have good fuel economy you're still doing less damage to the planet. But here we are convinced that an eco car is going to be wonderful for the planet. It isn't, it can't be. Just you do the maths. So any of these new technologies, you say, oh, we've got a new technology, that'll save us. No, it won't. And that's, that's a big challenge for people to take that on because they're so convinced that the scientists are so clever. Well, they're, you know, so clever, Three Mile Island, Sellafield, Chernobyl, Fukushima. Yeah, that's how clever they are. That's how clever they are. Oh, no, it'll never happen again. Yes, it did. You're lying. These are irresponsible, dangerous people with and, and this, you know, the James Bond movies with the mad scientists there and so on. It's, it's, it, that's what we're living in. And uh, it was in mad scientists. It's very easy when you get to the, to the cutting point of any of these technologies. You can't see a damn thing. Everybody's telling you you're wonderful. So these are, it's human problems we have. It's a spiritual problem uh, that we're faced with is how to wake up, especially when you're a brilliant person who's blinded. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's difficult enough when, you know, you've had the brainwash that, that we've had, which is uh, that we're living in a material world and you collect lots of points in the bank and, and you'll be happy. Um, so this, um, there's a, a meditator who, who uh, realized that Zen meditation was not going to get him enlightened. Uh, it was a, it was a, a false uh, a, a promise. It wasn't a, 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 it wasn't a science. It was an art form. He wanted a science where if you do this, 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 and you will get to have clear mind. And so he, um, he changed it to be meditation plus person inquiry. But his statement about this process of being able to see clearly the wood for the trees is a demolition job, is what he calls it. So you need to demolish your previous um, uh, assumptions and beliefs, or at least question them deeply before you can um, take on these new ideas, because you'll, you'll see them in terms of your previous prejudices and, and, um, and beliefs and attitudes. And that won't work uh, because you, if you've got this uh, um, uh, foundation uh, built on, on false assumptions, 
then you, anything you put on top uh, will be corrupted by it. So that uh, I think is, uh, um, uh, is my take on it. And how we get there, um, I hope is through these kind of discussions uh, that more and more people get involved in the discussion and um, create their own um, groups to discuss and to take action. Um, uh, I'm not saying that there aren't plenty of good uh, government and organized council initiatives, but um, the ones that I um, run into these difficulties, um, there's a sponsor who wants this. Somebody's given the money and they want it to be like that. So when, for, you know, uh, I, I've been with various projects, um, I've been looking for fun funding for various things, I've realized the hoops are not worth jumping through because the freedom you would have to create what you want to create, once you've signed on, on the dotted line, you're, you're not doing what you want, what you intended anymore. So I think this is, this is a, a great difficulty and one of the ones that uh, uh, more um, decentralization will help, where the funding is decided locally rather than nationally and so on. And that's not, it's not a big change in politics, actually. Um, uh, my father stood for Eastbourne as a Liberal candidate in three uh, elections um, and got the highest Liberal vote in the country and uh, ended his career as the um, president of the Liberal Party. And the reason that he wouldn't accept a safe seat in Scotland was because of his principles. You should represent the people you live amongst. And so that would be one thing, but you may not represent people you don't live amongst. Why would you want to do that? How can you do it? You can't. You don't live amongst them. You don't know their difficulties and their challenges. Um, and the other would be, have you got any vested interests? Well, if you have a company, small company, maybe that's okay. But if you own shares and things, you, you're not uh, suitable because uh, you're corrupt. You can be corrupted. How can you possibly make decisions for other people when you've got vested interest? So it'd be very easy to, to, uh, to find a system for at least our representatives are, are, um, uh, are less likely to, to be corrupted. Um, but, uh, you know, we, as I say, we, we've, we've been brainwashed into thinking that two-party politics is a good idea. Um, this is horrific. The, and you can see the behavior in Parliament. It's like five-year-olds. They shout at each other. Do we want these people? There's a bar that's open 24 hours a day. They're on alcohol and they shout at each other. Uh, it's not grown up. It's, it's ch children. How can you have respect? Uh, uh, and um, uh, so it, it, it really is time uh, for people to grow up. Um, uh, where the, 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 the difficulty with um, em empires is that uh, since uh, people specialize, um, and then they learn what to do what they're told is that we are sort of kept in a kind of child child likeness that um, we do what we're told and of course once you've got a complicated world I, I don't mind being told drive on the left hand side of the road it's safe for everybody it's of course it makes sense so you've got all this where it all makes sense and we should all do things the same way and and if you don't do it the right way then you should be punished and so on but of course that leads us to the point where we're in a stampede and how do you stop it and um i don't see any other way than individuals in the stampede moving shifting to the edge and hopping off the stampede and doing something different one by one i i i perhaps small groups hopping off here and there um but the chances of leadership of governments or industries saying, okay, we're, we're not going to make any money or, or we're going to make really unpopular decisions in, in no. Parliament. <coughs> they can't. They'll, they'll never be voted back in. They'll be voted out straight away. So I think that um, uh, if uh, our, our way forward is, is uh, for individuals to start questioning their assumptions uh, and, and perhaps start doing some maths on on ecology and having and seeing that um global warming is not really a problem uh, we've got much worse problems than that <laughs> if you want to look at problems um uh so um yeah
that's it. I think it's, it's down to each and every one of us. And, um, you know, uh, I've taken decisions to live in caravans for quite a lot of my life. Um, it's very low carbon footprint. But, you know, I'm there with everyone else. I have a car. It's, it's an old car, so that's the best I can do. But here we are, we're, we're tied in. How do we, how do we get round it? One of the ways, of course, is community. Um, because when you have a community that's actually living together, they only need two cars. 10 people perhaps need two, take two cars, or maybe 30 people only need one car, or, you know, uh, this, this is, community living is fabulous because you can share. So instead of everybody having a washing machine, you have a central washing machine, or two washing machines central. And then of course, all the water there in the hot water, so you might as well have a spa, because you can't afford one individually, but as a group, you can. So the advantages of community living are enormous. This individual living and the nuclear family is disastrous. Uh, it, it, um, we're not designed for it. Um, uh, socially, uh, psychologically, we're not designed for it. Um, and it's damaging in terms of consumption because we all need one of everything and, and we hardly ever use it. So co co more cooperation um, uh, will make an enormous difference to consumption on the planet. 